What happens when we die? The Bible is God's great lesson book. His great educator, the foundation of all true science, is contained in the Bible. Every branch of knowledge may be found by searching the Word of God. God tells us in the Bible. Genesis 2.7 And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. For he, God, knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. God said to Adam in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 19, this is after Adam and Eve had disobeyed him, In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust shall you return. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years, and begat a son in his own likeness after his image, and called his name Seth. And all the days of Adam were nine hundred and thirty years, and he died. King Solomon, the wisest king under inspiration, had this to say about death. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred, their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. All the kings of Israel and Judah are referred to as sleeping, also the prophets. Jesus Christ, the God-man, said death is asleep. Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then his disciples said to Jesus, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, Paul, they all referred to death as asleep. Jesus said, Take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time he stinks, for he has been dead for four days. Then he, Jesus, cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said to them, Loose him, and let him go. When Jesus called Lazarus from the grave, it wasn't, Come up, or come down. When Jesus returns to earth, Paul wrote this, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Why would he waken the sleeping saints if they were already in heaven? Immortality is God's alone. Now unto the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God, 
who only has immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach to, whom no man has seen, nor can see, to whom be honour and power everlasting. In contrast is man's mortality. For what is your life? It is even a vapour that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. But we are not without hope. Behold, Paul writes, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. What a glorious day that will be. Have you seen other signs of Jesus' return yet? It's worth a look. God bless you, friend.